Hi, guys. Uh, can you hear me? Yep. Right. So uh, my name is Zanay. I'm a founder and CEO of GateHub. Uh, good to see you all. We just uh, finished uh, this uh, presentation like uh, 15 minutes ago, so uh, please uh, be patient if something doesn't work yet as uh, planned. So uh, a little bit, a bit about uh, GateHub. GateHub is essentially specialized in everything related to Ripple. Uh, so when we first, um, I was working for Bitstamp when Bitstamp became the first uh, Ripple gateway back in the days. Uh, and so it was really a great uh, technology for me. So I wanted to, you know, create a, a Ripple wallet. And then, you know, the first thing I saw is there wasn't enough gateways. So we actually had to start building gateway software so that, uh, you know, we're now increasing the number of gateways and currencies available on the Ripple network. And uh, now that we are building the, uh, the gateway, the, the wallet is still, you know, not being actively, you know, uh, like a real wallet. And so we see Interledger like the final step in making this happen. How one can really simplify uh, the work for developers to use, you know, these uh, new uh, currencies such as Bitcoin, Ethereum, Ripple, and, you know, uh, IOUs and, you know, stocks and whatnot. And so we really see this um, Interledger as the, la the last missing piece in that puzzle. So I'm really happy uh, to be able to show you what we did. Uh, we have Damian Merlach here from Bitstamp, uh, founder, uh, co-founder of Bitstamp. So he's there uh, with me on the right is Gregor Golulicic. He was the one to actually build the back, back end of this. Uh, he's our CTO. Also, we have uh, with us uh, Jaka Huduklin, who is a lead uh, engineer, and also Sergey Foschki there in the back, uh, who's our COO. So why don't I just simply show you, and then we can talk about what actually is happening. So you'll see that on the right, I have the Bitstamp account, and on the left, I have uh, my uh, GitHub wallet. So, and what we'll do is I will send uh, euros. Uh, the connector will uh, exchange those euros for dollars and deposit them to my account on, uh, or Damian's account on Bitstamp. So let's see. I'll just quickly refresh everything so that it loads uh, again. So I'll type, and I'll talk about more what, what's happening here in the background, but I'll just, you know, send like 10 bucks to Damien. So, and on the right here, we should be able to see uh, balance change. Let's see, then, done. So, and money is already here. So this is... I mean, it's truly amazing that this, you know, technology can, I mean, there is not a single blockchain technology ready that can be, you know, uh, as scalable as this so we're, and as fast as this. So I'll have Gregor here to explain a bit more about the technical uh, details. I'll just uh, start with the first step. So actually, uh, Interledger source code uh, contains WebFinger. For identifier, what we did is we are actually uh, hiding web finger behind the so-called global ID. GateHub, among other things, is also helping developing global ID, which is essentially portable identity that you'll be able to use with any financial institution. So you won't have to, you know, upload your personal documents uh, again. You'll simply, you know, have this portable identity. You'll log into any bank, to any exchange, to any wallet, and you'll be able to do anything. So what hap is happening here when I type Damian? Actually, we query global ID, and then the global ID returns to us the list of web fingers that that global ID. And the global ID is essentially just like a Twitter handle, is like, uh, but without uh, at. And so we get web fingers, and then with web fingers we continue to do all of the other steps. With uh, that, I'll let uh, Gregor here explain more. Uh, well, I'm sure you already heard today about the process of like then the quote happens and after the payment like it's prepared and executed. And I mean, you've probably explained that before. And uh, uh, okay. Yeah, w w what I've done is uh, wrote a service that um, is the same for GitHub and Bitstamp and implements this protocol, uh, SPSP. Um, and uh, it's basically a wrapper over that ledger, GitHub ledger and Bitstamp ledger. Um, and 
it's the same source code. The the only difference is the uh, the con the implementation of the ledger APIs are different. So it's like very modular and will be able to to add any ledger into it. Um, so basically, these two services were deployed on GitHub and Bitstamp, and they communicate uh, between each other and with connector. And I really like the idea that connectors stay the same from the reference implementation of Five Bells. And basically, there wasn't much to do except for writing that plugin. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with that, but it's kind of uh, plugin implementation for the ledger. Um, and it's written uh, on the interledger page how to do it. And I basically just fork it and change it a little. But the, the majority of work was in that uh, service that uh, wrapped existing ledgers and uh, enable, uh, like enable them for interledger payments, which, which, uh, demand, which uh, required uh, implementing uh, crypto conditions, timeouts, uh, all this uh, by the specification. And there was much help from the interledger team on, on their Slack and uh, as well from the reference implementation. So that was really cool and it works really cool. <laughs> and um, let me talk about like what was maybe confusing or not, like w what I really uh, took, uh, it took me more time to, to figure out was this crypto condition, which I'm sure everyone is having problems in the beginning because it's a not it's not a new concept, but it just takes some time, you know. Uh, so it took us probably two days to figure out and write. I draw some schemes and like how to how to implement everything, and then the other three days were just working. Um, but yeah, in five days we made it, so it's it's not that hard. I mean, yeah. I encourage everyone to do it and. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, does anyone have more specific questions? Like, uh, maybe you can show how the services work in the background. Uh, okay. 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 That's not planned. <laughs> Something goes wrong. Yeah. Now what? You sent me the log. Um, does anyone have any questions while we're doing that? No? Yes? Yeah, okay. So you, you, you're, you have there 240 Bitcoins? Spend? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's totally legit. <laughs> if you don't look at domain, it's totally legit. <laughs> okay, let's see. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just so I understand this, sorry, maybe I came in a bit late. Um, you're moving funds from GitHub, GitHub into Ripple, uh, into Bitstamp. Yeah. Um, on GitHub, are those assets created on Ripple? No. No. Um, so the the ten dollars oh, there. Well, um, these assets on 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 the GitHub. We, we also have off the Ripple ledger, which um, tracks the balance, like all the deposits made. So this is actually, this euro balance is a balance that's on our ledger, which is off the Ripple. And basically this ledger that keeps track of this uh, uh, send the, these euros to Bitstamp dollars and connector convert them by using fixer EO rate but what we think it, Ripple can be used is uh, where Ripple can be used is for connector to actually then settle some of the uh, um, transactions so he can have balances available on the both sides. Uh, so, so just to, the answer is no. So this is uh, completely, we, we have two types of wallets. One are Ripple wallets, which are native Ripple accounts on the network. And uh, this is not that. These are so-called hosted wallets and are essentially just like, you know, uh, private uh, ledger. 
uh, so they are connected. Obviously, you can still withdraw this uh, balance to your Ripple wallet and you know trade it if you want. But you know, long term, we don't see Ripple being used for everyday transactions. Uh, we see it used a lot among the connectors themselves uh, and how they actually uh, settle the funds between the ledgers. But we don't see everybody, you know, be, uh, having access to the. Ripple network itself. So why, um, just so I'm clear about it, yeah. why uh, are you using Interledger? Why not Bitstamp um, have their own asset or share the same ledger as yeah. GitHub? Why? Well, we, we could do that. I mean, that was the first thing when we came to Bitstamp, Damian said, well, why are we even bothering with doing this if we can simply, you know, call their API? Uh, the answer is, you know, it's, it's a standard. We need to have a standard so that every wallet developer can actually use that standard and, you know, create a product that works the same with, you know, Bank of America or with, you know, crypto exchange. It doesn't have to be uh, hard for, you know, wallet developers to do that. And, you know, with, with uh, th these uh, standards, we it can achieve, you know, faster development of the, you know, products. And so that's the reason. I mean, obviously, we could do that, but it would just take too long time, right? Um, and how would you contrast your experience of working with Interledger with, say, just um, side chains, for instance, to so convert the asset through a side chain? Yeah. Well, Interledger is not a chain, right? It's not an asset by itself. It's not even, you know, it's it's basically air. It's, it doesn't exist in, in a way uh, like, you know, side chains and the Ripple network and, you know, Bitcoin network exists. So uh, it's a different kind of animal. It, it's just a communication, I mean, standard uh, language, not as much as, you know, asset by itself or a ledger by itself. Thanks. Yeah. And one more thing that I forgot to, to, to talk about is that right here we are, we are using euros and on Bitstamp dollars, but uh, of course we have multi-currency on our end and the same on the Bitstamp end and our integration, like this is just the beginning and we'll do much more work in, uh, uh, on an interledger and we'll support uh, sending of course all the currencies like s different source currencies, different destination currencies um, by connecting Interledger to basically all of our vaults, how you call it, but basically all different. And, and maybe uh, to like just talk a bit about you know our core business, which is essentially gateway software. Uh, I don't think many companies has to deal with the problems we have to deal with because on our you know gateway as a cloud service, we offer multiple gateways to actually use our software to transact uh, and communicate with. Ripple network and other network. And so uh, we see Interledger also solving the problem of communicating with them on our internal system. So essentially, we'll not only be using Interledger as a way to communicate with other ledgers, but also as a way to communi communicate internally among all the currencies and among all the gateways. Yeah. It's worth emphasizing here that what you saw is the same as the demo we saw earlier today with red and blue, but this is real money moving through. There's a connector entity here, um, a market maker who partnered us on this little project, who's providing liquidity. This is He's got accounts on both sides, and he's literally moved money from one to the other at a rate that, that he determined. So the purpose of doing this with Interledger and not just having a bilateral agreement is next step is the guys can, you know, connect onto someone else and someone else. It's a, you know, it's, it's the first step in potentially multi-chain transactions originating from either of these, which is really exciting, I think. Yeah. Please. Yeah. Hi, Anne. Nice to see you again. Hey. Um, I have a question about the connector piece. Sure. And it relates to liquidity. Um, all of these systems, as we've seen over the past several years, don't amount to much without liquidity. And it's a real chicken and egg problem in that liquidity providers won't provide liquidity unless there's a business case. And if there's no liquidity, there's no, there's no uh, reasonable proposition that people will want to transact on the systems. The protocol itself is independent of liquidity, and order flow goes to liquidity. Yeah. Always does, and always will. Um, in the setup here of the connector, um, you've opened accounts 
on both sides, one in dollars, one in euro. Yeah. How much liquidity is currently available for this demo? Uh, I think it's a couple thousand dollars, but there is one very important thing about the connector. If uh, Bitstamp and GateCup were to decide that connector can actually issue money on the fly, you wouldn't even have to provide liquidity for any amount of uh, funds, right? Then just the connector will, would have to eventually move money from one end to another, uh, probably via Ripple or you know anything else. Okay, so I mean, you c in in that case, you're talking about credit lines being made yeah. available. Okay, I mean that's that's what market makers do is they they um, have some amount of collateral and then use credit lines to to make yeah. markets and whatever the assets are that they they are making markets in. Um, in this case, let's say that there are two or more connectors on these two ledgers, um, where you've got a connector on one side making euros. You've got five connectors making euro uh, markets in euros to uh, uh, dollars. Yeah. Um, GateHub to Bitstamp. Is there any way currently to aggregate the liquidity provided by those five connectors, or is that liquidity fragmented? I think uh, Stefan might uh, answer that uh, more, more, but uh, um, I think that there, you know, I don't think that there is a way to merge that liquidity together uh, at the moment, but I don't see, you know, why we wouldn't be able to do that if it, it was needed. But I think that, you know, all the connectors will be, um, you know, financial institutions or, you know, uh, will not be, you know, will not provide just a couple thousand dollars, they, they will provide a couple of millions uh, or, you know, how, whatever is needed. But, you know, it, the problem with Ripple was that, you know, there, there is just, it was just simply too hard to, to do anything with it, you know, first to build a gateway, then to build a wallet, then to integrate it with, you know, existing systems. And so, you know, we, we really see that Interledger can improve this also for the Ripple and the liquidity, right? Because when people start using these wallets and, you know, when we connect this type of uh, wallets to, you know, credit cards and, you know, to cryptocurrencies, we're essentially the only one that can provide fiat and crypto world from one, you know, interface or from one system, which is kind of par powerful when you think about it, right? Because right now, you know, you have exchanges like Poloniex, where you where they only deal with crypto, and then you have exchanges like uh, Bitstamp, where they deal with fiat, but you know, because of the regulatory limitations, they simply cannot move as fast as Poloniex can move. And so, if we can just say, well, let let Poloniex deal with crypto, and let you know maybe Bitstamp deal with fiat, and then if we bring those two together then we have what we need, right? We have, you know, all the, all the possibilities that uh, people can get. Do you want to talk a little bit more about the uh, global ID um, component and how it resolves, uh, what it's intended to become? I think yeah. that's kind of interesting. All right, so maybe a bit of background. Global ID actually started uh, at Ripple in the beginning, uh, in a way, because when Ripple was building Ripple Trade, uh, they built this Blob Vault and the identity service. And the idea was that, you know, instead of the complex long names and addresses for the Ripple wallet, you would simply get a, like a Twitter handle like uh, name. Uh, what we did was we actually expanded that idea so that not only you can, you know, in the background uh, map uh, wallets to that name, uh, what we did was also map documents encrypted documents of your passport and, you know, KYC uh, documents uh, and simply create a database of highly encrypted, you know, personal information that you can then share with gateways, essentially. So what happens here on, on GateCup, at least, when you connect a new gateway, you essentially allow them to see your personal documents and you essentially re-encrypt your documents with their public key and so this is how they can then get access. Now, the global... ID is even more expanded idea of all of this. So the idea is that we have a neutral organization that, you know, all the financial institutions can use so that, you know, GateHub doesn't deal with this. And uh, probably that um, the global ID as a company or organization will be probably based in Luxembourg. And Greg Kitt, our investor, is, you know, highly motivated in this idea. Um, I don't know if you know him, but he was... Uh, um, First one of the first investors in Twitter. So, and you know, since then he was intrigued by the idea of identity and how one can, you know, have better way to 
you know, have his identity and can use it, you know, online. So, yeah, right now the, I mean, the global ID, the app was just, um, is in uh, testing phases, but the app itself will essentially become a wallet of sort. And you know, uh, one of the providers of uh, wallets in that global ID app will also be GitHub, probably even Bitstamp uh, in the future, and you know, uh, many others that I cannot uh, discuss right now. Uh, but yeah, the idea is simply to have like a safe repository of all the personal information that you can use with any financial institution. And so, you know, the organization itself will be owned by companies using uh, the global ID. So probably this will be banks and, you know, finan other financial institutions. Uh, and it will be, you know, we when we started doing this at GitHub, we designed it in a way so that we can store personal information on multiple locations, not, you know, uh, not uh, limiting the you know, the, the fact that some countries will not allow you to have personal information stored in some other country. So everything that is prepared, the next step for Global ID probably is that uh, some of the information will be on some blockchain that we don't know which one yet, maybe Ethereum, maybe, you know, something else, we'll see. It doesn't really matter, right? Uh, we just, uh, some key information will be re recorded on the blockchain uh, soon. So that's the idea. So if someone wants to care more about it, just go to myglobalid. Uh, something like that. Yeah. Global ID. Yeah. Me. I think it's um, it's important to point out that the guys have used the sort of set up application layer protocols to solve what is a key issue is the compliance thing. So you know by using Global ID, that transfer from GitHub to Bitstamp is a fully compliant money transfer. They know who the, they know that the receivers KYC all of that sort of stuff. So you know that's not a problem solved by Interledger, but it's a problem that they were able to solve on top of Interledger, which I think is, is also really cool and a good indication of how the protocol itself, in its simplicity, is a great foundation to build you know, the, other, the other important pieces on top. Um, there's a question at the back, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm going to go in reverse order here. First, I, I, you said uh, just now, Adrian, that what they've done with Global ID is built on top of Interledger. I, I actually in a different way, it's it's independent of it's orthogonal. Yeah, it's like in yeah. parallel, yeah. actually. So, um, and 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 I'd love to talk with you offline about other things that are going on in that space in the standards industry because you said something super important about ten minutes ago, and I want you to write it down somewhere. You said the importance of of the reason you used ILP is because standards are important, and because if you use standards, it will ease your implementation across other ledgers later. That's huge. And that's what people don't get. So well done you. I was going to applaud, but I didn't want to interrupt the questioner. I, fantastic. Just I, keep beating that drum because it's true. The, the commoditization of the protocol is what will make this successful. It grows the pie and it reduces the cost of implementation for everybody. And, and you know, who can argue with that? Well done. Thank you. Thank you. And you know, j just so you know more about GateCup, so we're not, you know, we could be talking more about what we're doing, but we're actually very busy doing at what we're doing because uh, <laughs> we we have all the, I think we have all the knowledge to make it happen. So we're, you know, right now we're focusing on building products and then we'll focus on, you know, bringing them to the market. But right now we're still in, in a kind of, um, we're still experimenting how we can merge interledger with global identity and you know how to actually be compliant everywhere in the world how to make gateways that are on our platform compliant and how to you know create a safe ecosystem of uh, you know or the internet of value or how Chris is uh, like to call it yeah okay. if there are no more questions we'll have a quick um, session about uh, chat about what we're going to do this afternoon. Anything more from you guys? If there are no questions, then uh, thank you for listening. To thank us you and, very uh, much. Thanks. And join GateCup to see the future.